and this is my story in 2015 um i was hoping for mcmurray uh Alberta, and um, due to the downturn in economy my role at work was one of the ones that was let go so i was laid off and um, i found myself at home with nothing to do i was getting bored i was um, getting anxious i was actually quite fearful of what the future was gonna be like and my brain was gradually going to a place where i never ever pray that it ever gets to again so i prayed and the lord laid it upon my heart to learn something so i chose crochet so um I went into Walmart and I bought myself a set of hooks and I got my I got the uh, crochet book and some yarn and I went back home and I started to teach myself to crochet and thank goodness for YouTube videos I was getting along well with my um, newfound hobby and I started showing everybody like oh, I can crochet do you see this do you see that I anybody that was that cared to know knew that I was crocheting at that time and I was always giving out crochet stuff crochet item so along the line I showed it to my to my pastor and pastor Tunde Jaiva and he said oh yeah that's good you're doing a great job but what next and I said what do you mean what next I'm I'm already crocheting. I'm already doing something. I'm just going to crochet and give it out. And he said, no, no. You are a person of influence. And what God has given into your hands is something that you should utilize in a better way. Where is your website? Where can people go to see what you're doing? And how can people know more about what you're doing? And I said, hmm, really? So... I went back, did some research and found out how to create a website. So I started, I made my own website from scratch. And at the beginning, I was always sending people to my website. Have you seen my website? Please go there, go and check and see what I've done. And um, that was how we started out. And um, I continued to crochet and my house was getting filled with a lot of stuff that I wasn't going to be able to use. So what do I do with all of this stuff? So I started contacting hospitals, I contacted hospices like, oh, I can crochet, do you want it? A number of them said to me that they have more than enough and uh, they didn't want any more. And that made me go online and during my search, I came across this group called Crochet for Cancer and uh, I joined them. I joined them as the as the member as a member from alberta canada and we were we started crocheting for cancer push, uh, patients we made uh, chemo hearts we made um lap blankets anything just to give them comfort and along with whatever we have crocheted we always put a bible verse in there something to comfort them something that they can read that will remind them of the love of god and that was a true true blessing to me and uh, i was able to even give stuff out to um, nicus for little kids here and with that came the idea that hmm why don't you look at something that you can do back home in Nigeria? Um, there's a lot of preemies that need help out there. Preemies are very close to my heart because I've had experience with premature birth. So uh, that was how we started the Niger Preemie Project. And what did we do with this? We were trying to raise funds. I wish I had a lot of money. I do. If I did, I, I know what I could do with it. But I didn't have as much money as I wish I, I, I did. So in our own little way with the Premi Niger Premi Challenge, what we did was we were, we were making hats here and we were raising funds. And those funds were used for local hospitals. So we went to the hospitals through the... Uh, I partnered with the Ministry of the Church that I was attending in Nigeria. And... Um, I went to this local local hospitals and asked them what is the need what is the need right now and something as simple as bedpan drip stand you know uh weighing machine for newborn and diapers and stuff like that so we raised quite a uh, an amount of money which was sent home to nigeria and it was given to these hospitals and i found that 
to be a blessing to be a part of that it was so 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 wonderful it's something that i would never forget yeah so um by this time i was very active on ig on facebook on twitter and people were asking me Biswe, can you teach me how to crochet can you show me what you're doing and i'm like i am just jjc <laughs> I don't know how to crochet myself but um we decided to run a day camp for 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 kids so uh, i think summer of 2016 or 2017 we had a day camp and the idea was just to introduce crochet something to the kids that they can work on by themselves it was fun it was just a one day and they were it was really it was really fun working with the kids and thereafter we got invited over to uh, regina to work with a group of ladies that wanted to learn how to crochet so that they can in turn crochet and give it out to people in their communities like hospitals and and stuff like that so uh that's me <laughs> because i lost my job it's amazing amazing honestly it's mind-blowing yeah so we were doing that we were doing that and then came another idea this one was inspired by my friend ij uh it is a hat a meal and a bible verse now this project we reach out to the homeless community because you look around there's a lot of homeless people out there people that just need the love of god they need a warm garment or they need a warm meal that is all they need and instead of us just looking the other way and walking away this little gesture it's gonna go a long way so i partnered with my friend because what she does is every year during christmas time she will go buy tim horton's card and go downtown calgary and just hand it out so i said okay let's take it a step further let's add um, a hat and a and a bible verse along with the with the uh, with the uh, milk cards that you're giving out and let's make 20 a month so we run this from september through to february every year and so we crochet the hat we take it down to downtown calgary and that has been going on for i'd say three years now and the last one was really really phenomenal because i had people that were suggesting other things so now our parks what we do is inside that park we have the hat we have um, a washcloth, we have uh, the, the milk card, of course we have the Bible verse, something to remind them of who they are and who they can be. And along with that, we started adding some basic toiletries like a pair of socks, we started adding a bar of soap, there is the toothpaste and there is toothbrush in every pack and it's always so much blessing going out in the cold to go and hand this out to people and we've, we've had such so much success in this and it's it's a blessing honestly a lot of the times we go by ourselves and sometimes we just walk around with uh, groups that work directly with these people we've been to mustard seed we've been to in from the cold we've had a chance to walk alongside with um, um be the change yyc they had this giving tree last year where we went and hung and hung those things there so that 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 is something that we still do every year every year and we intend to continue doing it as long as we're given the grace to okay so back to the handcrafted love story so by now uh i'd been on instagram like i said and people started asking me ah hello madam this yarn that you're using is there a way we can get it in nigeria how can we get this yarn here how can this how can that and the business idea came why don't we start sending foreign source yarn to nigeria in addition to the yarn that they can source locally and so we gathered some stuff and we sent it to nigeria just to test the waters and my oh my the reception was amazing that's my favorite word now amazing honestly the reception was was it was it was amazing and um 
it even opened my eyes to a world that is beyond me here now i've had with with the shop in nigeria i've had a chance to relate with and work closely with a lot of uh, crafters in nigeria knitters crocheters people that i wouldn't have taught in my wildest dreams that i would be able to relate with and there's so many talented people out there that sometimes i'm like ah this way you're just starting on <laughs> You don't even know anything. Don't don't even fool yourself that you know anything at all. And um, it's actually getting beyond Nigeria. I got people from Togo, people from Cote d'Ivoire, people from Benin Republic, people from all over. Just trying to, madam, what do you do? How can we get this? Can we get this? Can we get that? And my mind is always working, you know. So uh, that was how we started our shop in Nigeria and uh, back in in canada i still had a lot of yarn because i um, i'm always buying i'm always i see this i want it i see this i want it and um i thought to myself what am i gonna do with all this yarn there's too many you know and i spoke to one of my friends in the uk and she said why don't you try amazon or etsy you and me etsy amazon how am I going to compete with all these big, big people? But she, she wouldn't let go. She was just like, you have to try it. And I started it out. And when I got my first sale, I was so, so happy. I was so happy. Like, ah, somebody bought something from me. And our Etsy shop right now, it's, it's blossoming. When I see reviews, and I said, is it me? Are you, sh are you people sure that it is me that they're talking about? Because... How did all of this start? Because I lost my job and I thought that was the end. And no, it wasn't. It was just the beginning, you know? So uh, the Etsy shop is there. It's running. It's doing fine. And by this time, we're talking 2018, 2019. And um, along the line, I got a job. Yes, I did. Uh, it was a full-time job. It had its own demands and everything and i was doing full-time work i was crocheting i was doing my business i was sourcing for yarn i was doing all of that all together and it was a lot of work a lot of work but i was having fun i enjoyed myself i do not regret it but how did i get all of this done without breaking down because i have a great support system oh my oh my i have the best support system in the whole wide world see my husband eh, hmm, he's a wonderful <laughs> he's a wonderful man he's very quiet he doesn't say much you know but he is a solid support he, he indulges my madness <laughs> he allows me to do whatever i want to do as long as I stay accountable, that's what what he said. said. As long as you're accountable, you need to promise me that you'll be accountable. And I learned how to be accountable. You know? And um, my family, my siblings, my parents, my pastor, my church family, they just keep pushing me on. Like, be so yeah, you can do this. Some are silent, some are vocal, you know. And my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law in Nigeria, oh my goodness, they are the best. They're the ones that help me with this shop set up. They're always going up and down. Oh, don't worry, madam, we'll handle this for you. Don't worry, this way we can handle this for you. And my staff, oh my God, I've been blessed. So it was the support system. You always need a good support system to be able to carry on with whatever you want to do. And um, so that's, that's, that's how it's been i have a good support system i know how to motivate myself a lot yeah because i get people calling me from all over oh be so you've seen what you've done uh this person saw it and is inspired by it that person saw it and is inspired by it uh can you can do you can you imagine my mom wants to learn my my sister my daughter and all of that and even my own mom yeah she learned how to crochet just because she saw me crocheting and she was like that thing that you're doing i need to learn how to she struggled at the beginning but now she is very very good at it and that's 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 a blessing to me
even our friend in the u.s she's crocheting now because my mom is crocheting and another mom in the u.s she's my friend's mom my friend just called me up and said hey be so you know what my mother wants to crochet it's because of you so i said yeah go on, go for it so that that has been happening a lot and people still kept on asking me come and teach us come and teach us you know and and so we we had to start the virtual class we had to officially start the virtual class in this we we bring people in we show them a lot of stuff give them the abcs try to inspire them to discover what is inside of them and we've had two sessions now that's been very very successful i've had random questions from from facebook people asking me ah oh, madam please this thing excuse me ma'am, doing this can you help me with this is this correct is this not correct and i i need to keep learning i need to keep my keep on my toes because people think that i know <laughs> people think that i know a lot i don't i don't honestly i don't i'm just learning every day i i spend a lot of time learning new things i spend a lot of time crocheting now because i crochet a lot about five to six hours a day yes i did that because i just have to be busy that's just me i call myself crazy because um i need to have my my head screwed on right i need to be grounded i need to I need to be busy so that I don't have time for all the comparing myself with people, gossiping and all of the whatnots that there used to be. So I need to be very busy. I'm always looking for the new project. I have a lot of work in progress. A lot. that I don't even know when I'm ever going to be able to finish them. But that is me. So because I crochet a lot, I met with one obstacle along the line. And the obstacle is my hand. I started having problems with my with my hand and um, got to a point that I actually had to stop and go and see the doctor and yeah, they diagnosed um, trigger finger and for that I had to start getting um, um, steroid injections so that my hand is working well and I had to keep on crushing. <laughs> yeah, I had to keep on crushing. So I figured how do I walk around this so i thought i i said to myself i'm going to improvise uh crochet handles for my hooks so i just got a mesh and then i improvised and i posted it on on instagram just to just to inspire people that um come on where there's a will there's always a way and that's that's the theme of everything that i do like there is a way if you if you really put your heart to it and someone saw the post Someone from the U.S. saw the post. And she reached out to me and she said, You know what? I want to bless you. I'm going to make some agronomic handles for your hooks. Because I want you to continue doing what you're doing. And I was... I was blown away. I was... I felt so blessed. She did not take a dime from me. Those things cost a lot of money. She did not take a dime from me. And she made them and... This just taught me one more thing that wherever I am, whatever I am doing, at whatever stage of life that I am in, I am never ever alone. God is always there. He always places people in my way to show me, to tell me that he is there, you know. So um, that was how I got my agronomic hooks and I was still able to continue crocheting. So um, I had the shops. I had the virtual teaching, I had the charity thing going and I was getting, I was getting bored. So I thought, mm, what's the next thing to do? So I bought myself a sewing machine just because, yeah. So I wanted something else. I wanted a different kind of challenge and I started teaching myself how to sew and um, I would go on YouTube get on my knees sew clothes and wear it put it on the mannequin and take pictures upon pictures and i started posting it and people were like <sighs> i called myself jjc because i am new to it i know that i'm new i know it's a lot of people are better than me so i quickly bring myself to the lowest like ah, <laughs> i'm just starting you know and i put it on my etsy page and someone bought it I tried to persuade the lady not to, but she wouldn't she wouldn't listen. She wanted it. And she bought it. And I made clothes for my mom. I made clothes for my style. I made clothes for myself. And the idea now came to me that be so if you are 
if you have if you're going to be sewing why don't you have a fabric shop so that's how we started our fabric shop i started sourcing for fabric all over so my fabric shop right now it's doing well doing very well people are like oh when can we get this when can we get that and it's mind-blowing amazing the journey has been wonderful i've met with people they've i've been blessed by people i think my i call it ministry <laughs> i think my ministry has blessed a lot of people and i find out that if god has blessed me this much how can i repay it other than just give it just give it away just give it just just show people the more the more i learn the more i know but the more i share the more i grow because when the people that i teach when they grow then i am growing and so i give it out i give it out and then there's more room for more to come in and i can go on and on and on and on uh not too long ago i think we came full circle to where i started from and um, by that i mean that because of the COVID-19 and the economic downturn and the everything that is going on in the world, it is inevitable that, life's, uh, like that life happens. And yeah, it happened. And I lost my job again. Yes, I, I am <laughs> jobless now. I am jobless again now. But you know what? It doesn't bother me in any way. Why? Because I know God has a plan. He always has a plan. And it is always a good, good, good plan. I didn't plan to be here. I didn't plan to have all of this. But he has a plan and he's able to make everything to work together for our good. He's able to take what the enemy meant for evil. And he can turn it around for good. Only if we align ourselves to him. So, to me, it's a chance for a new adventure. It's another roller coaster ride i don't know where it's gonna lead but it has to be somewhere good so i'm ready i'm willing that is what i said to him like help me to see what you are seeing that i am not seeing so i am very very sure in the next couple of years if jesus tarries we're gonna look back and be like whoa how did that even happen yeah and that is where i want to be that is my story my name is bisoyo a lot of people call me alexandra i am uncrafted wife i am a product of the extreme grace of god i'm here today because of his grace i am a mom i'm a wife I am a lover of God. I love to crochet. I love to sew. I love to garden. I love very good music. <laughs> and I love to share the love of God to everybody. My advice to you is find something that you're very good at and stick to it. Stay in your lane. Trust God. It can only get better. I hope my story has inspired you to trust God for the next level of your life. Do more of what makes you sparkle and never give up. God bless you.